And now we come to worship. This is Ottawa First United Methodist Church. We are happy to have many of you join us here in the sanctuary. We are thankful for our visitors who are with us today. And we are always happy to know that there are others join in, joining us by means of media on Facebook and KOFO Radio. Thank you for coming early so that we can greet one another here and to share our joys and concerns before we start the live streaming. We may feel like our nation is in a mess. Let us be thankful for what we have and for those that don't have as much as we do and are in much worse conditions than we are in. God is still on his throne. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come with our hearts full of requests, asking for different, many different ways for members who need your strength and healing. Be with those who are recovering from surgeries and illnesses, and touch those who are grieving death in their family. We give them all to you, Lord. Make us your instruments of caring. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest as we praise your holy name in song, scripture, and message. Be with our Pastor Jay and others who lead us in this service. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Good morning. My name is Surya Davis. I'm your liturgist today. And we have one more announcement. The Blue Angels are supposed to circle around Ottawa about 6.15 tonight. So that sounds fun. Uh, as you're able, would you please rise and join me for the call to worship? Across the wilderness, America, America, God mend thine every flaw, confirm thy soul in self control, thy liberty. Heroes proved in liberating strife, who more than self their country loved, and mercy more than life. America, America, may God thy gold refine. Till all success be nobleness and every gain divine. Oh, beautiful for patriot dream that sees beyond the years. Thine alabaster cities gleam, undimmed by human tears. America, America, God shed his grace on thee, and crown thy good with brotherhood. From sea to shining sea. Well, the children come up now for children's time. Hi. <laughs> I finally made it. <laughs> I wonder if I could get two more girls who might be 21 or so over there. 20, under 21? 21? <laughs> I need some help. <laughs> All right. So I have all this stuff. I wonder if you could kind of spread it out there and then, not these, and then maybe point to the stuff that I'm talking about. I have a story about stuff. You know how we use that word all the time? I gotta get my stuff. I have to do my stuff, whatever. And I'm just going to read it because I can't tell it as good as it is here. All right. Every spring, I start stirring my stuff. There's closet stuff, drawer stuff, attic stuff, and basement stuff. I separate the good stuff from the bad stuff, and then I stuff the bad stuff anywhere the stuff is not too crowded until I decided if I needed the bad stuff. When the Lord calls me home, that means when I go to heaven, 
My children will want the good stuff, but the bad stuff, stuffed wherever there's room among all the other stuff, will probably be stuffed in bags and taken to the dump, where all the other people's stuff has been taken. Whenever we have company, they always bring bags and bags of stuff. When I visit my son, he always moves his stuff so I have room for my stuff. Their stuff, my stuff, it would be so much easier to use their stuff and leave my stuff at home with the rest of my stuff. So last fall, I had an extra closet built. So I would have a place for all the stuff too good to throw away and too bad to keep with my good stuff. You may not have this problem, but I seem to spend a lot of time with stuff. So I have some stuff here. Food stuff, those pans maybe. Cleaning stuff, medicine stuff, clothes stuff, you see some clothes there. And toy stuff, outside stuff. What would life be like if we didn't have all this stuff? Now, there is all that stuff we use to make us smell better than we do. There's stuff to make our hair look good, stuff to make us look younger, stuff to make us look healthier, stuff to hold us in and stuff to fill us out. There's stuff to read, <laughs> stuff to play with, stuff to entertain us, and stuff to eat. We stuff ourselves with the food stuff. Well, our lives are filled with stuff. Good stuff, bad stuff, little stuff, big stuff, useful stuff, junky stuff, and everyone's stuff. Now, when we leave all that stuff and go to heaven, whatever happens to our stuff is not going to matter because we have the good stuff. God has prepared the good stuff for us in heaven. Now, last year, I was going to do this stuff thing because pastor had talked about we needed to get rid of the things we didn't need in our lives. So I brought some boxes and you're going to have to help because we're going to give as many people out here a box and they need to put something in there, some stuff that they don't need. And then they can either send it to the dump or they can recycle it or they can take it to Hope House if they have some food stuff they don't need, or if they have some shampoo kind of stuff that they don't need, they could put it in this box. Now, it's not a very big box, so you don't have to clean out too much. But I'm going to have you pass out boxes, keep one here for yourself, and then come back and get it. And when you come back to get your box, you can get a lollipop, okay? All right, that's the best part of the stuff, isn't it? All right, so. We need to start getting boxes and take them out to people. You girls want to help carry the bag? All right, grab a box and take it out to somebody. It doesn't matter who. Give them some boxes. And there's another bag of boxes back there. Take more than one. Get some boxes and take them out. Give them away. Come back to get some more. And grown-ups, you need to get rid of some stuff. Here's some more. I think a lot of us went through our stuff in the last year and a half, but it keeps adding up. Okay. 
Uh, if you would like to stand for the reading of the scripture. Today I'm reading Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 through 18. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you do not, are not consumed by the other. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Today is Independence Day. People who already have freedom may not understand. But for people who are under suppression, there is no bigger issue than freedom. Give me liberty or give me death. This is a quote attributed to Patrick Henry from a speech he made to the Virginia Convention on March 23rd, 1775. He was not afraid to give up his life for freedom. When my kids young, when my kids were young, I sometimes gave them a timeout or would have them be grounded. Many children often cry when we tell them to sit on a timeout chair. Although we do not have a painful punishment, for them, children still cry because they feel limited in what they can do. Many people feel limited in their personal lives, and they get stressed because they worry about their health, work, or money. However, we who come out to God and worship Him need to live with freedom. This morning, I'd like to share the grace of God under the topic of freedom and faith. We should not confuse sin and freedom. The word freedom and sin look like totally different words, but these words have similar meanings when it is freedom without condition. In the grace of God, we can choose everything what we want. However, doing everything we want is not freedom. Sometimes it is sin because we are too weak to overcome Satan's temptation. One theologian said that Setting ourselves free is setting the evil free in our mind. When we ignore the order and the rules of life, our actions become sin. Just because we are mad, we shouldn't kill a person. When we need to get something, if we take it without paying the right amount, we would commit sin. There is a very fine line between sin and freedom. In today's scripture, verse 13, it says, For you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. 
God has called us to give us freedom. We should use this freedom to help others instead of using freedom for our desires. Many children sometimes complain to their parents saying, leave me alone. I can take care of myself. This can be taken wrong, and they can commit as many sins as they want. Sin is doing whatever we want to do. However, freedom is living within the order of the word of God. If we want to give a fish, freedom and throw it up in the sky, the fish will not be free. Once a fish leaves the water, its pain will begin. No matter how small the pond in which a fish lives, when it is underwater, the fish can finally enjoy its freedom. Christians are just like that fish. We can only enjoy our freedom when we live under God. In Gospel, Luke chapter 15 talks about a son leaving his father to find freedom. The son wanted to be free from his father's interference. However, after he went through his portion of the inheritance from his father, he realized that true freedom only existed under his father's house. And he came back to his father. True freedom can only be found within God. We should be careful not to wander around looking for freedom and end up losing it. Freedom without God will only bear us the fruit of sin. We can worship God and volunteer to serve the community in the freedom of God. We can choose whatever we want, but we have to choose what God wants us to do. When we are in God, we can enjoy the real freedom. And we should use our freedom for love. In verse 13, it says, For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only do not use for freedom as an opportunity for your self-indulgence, but through love, become slaves to one another. Apostle Paul encouraged us to become slaves to one another with love. In Gospel Mark chapter 12, verse 28 through 31, Jesus said, the first, the first is, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Paul said that we should use our freedom to love one another. We need to be able to see the love within the freedom. Freedom for our own use is greed. If a person who enjoys his freedom does not realize the love of God, his freedom will become his sin. Freedom is based on love. Becoming a slave is the complete opposite meaning of freedom. To serve a master, servants 
must give up many things for their master. Slaves always want to be free. However, Apostle Paul said that we should become slaves of love to one another. The freedom we have received from God should be used for love. To love somebody, we dedicate our time, our money, and our passion for them because love is dedication. To love God, we must give up something that we regard as important. To love our neighbors is also required our dedications. We are called by God for freedom. So, Apostle Paul said, we should be slaves. True freedom comes with love. God wants us to use our freedom for others. We need to follow the Holy Spirit for freedom also. In verse 16, Apostle Paul says, Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. As Christians, we should be able to follow the Holy Spirit within our life of obeying God and serving one another with love. Do not gratify the desires of the flesh means is the same as do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. How can we not use our freedom for our own self-indulgence? How can we not gratify the desires of the flesh? When we follow the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will lead us on the right path. The religious life of a Christian is a life full of the Holy Spirit. Obey the guidance of the Holy Spirit to practice goodness and share love. This is the way to be a true Christian. We cannot live without worries or hardships in this world because all the evils from this world shake our lives and tempt us into sins. So Apostle Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, Discipline yourselves, keep alert, like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. As we live in this world, we need to depend on the word of God and stand next to truth. However, it is hard to stay within the word of God only with our own will and strength. For us to stay on the path of faith, we need to follow the Holy Spirit when we can let go of ourselves, let go of our bad habit, and follow the Holy Spirit, we can finally be free. When we focus on our calling as Christians, we will be free from temptation, pain, and worries from Satan. I hope that all of us are able to experience the freedom from God. For this experience, remember these three things. First, do not confuse freedom with sin. Second, obey the word of God and serve each other in love. And third, follow the Holy Spirit. I pray in Jesus' name that all of us are able to live lives of freedom and practice our faith. Let us pray. 
Dear our loving God, we thank you for giving us our Savior Jesus Christ to give us freedom, and we thank you for what we have learned from him about freedom. Lord, help us to realize what true freedom is and help us practice our faith in you. Free us from our worries and temptations so that we can live peacefully and gracefully. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Merciful God, we celebrate your freedom by sharing treasures, talents, and time along our way. Open our hearts to share our gifts with others and using our freedom in the name of the Lord. We offer ourselves with this gift. Use us for your kingdom and bless us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first Sunday of July, so we have communion service. Please join our communion. Christ our Lord invites to his table to all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of our needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophet, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters, and righteousness like a ever-flowing stream, when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth, and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son Jesus Christ, your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, that and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his accession, ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. 
And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. This is body of Christ. Because there is one robe, we are one body. For we all partake of the one robe. The bread which we break is sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is sharing in the blood of Christ. So prepare yourself to get communion. So communion service.
Let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let's stand for our closing hymn out of the red hymnal. 
Number 697, America, my country tis of thee. Go forth as God's beloved and chosen children. May you proclaim the God's freedom to the world and let people be free from the evil's trap. God will provide the power, the love, and the opportunities for us to be successful. Now, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.